in there. The program is this morning on ITV. It's now time for us to look at uh, aviation safety, one very important aspect for air travelers across the country and even beyond. Uh, sometimes it's not easy when you have to go by air. Like someone will always tell me, one who I uh, love to, who, who, who hates to fly, will tell me that one thing he saw, that is not the fact that he's having height phobia. The next thing he struggles with is that he loves a system where he can travel and if for nothing, they can pack somewhere. Should in case there's anything, they can pack somewhere and somehow, but somehow, when you are cruising in the air, you cannot pack somewhere. But the beauty of the air traveling, it's so, 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 so nice. Uh, like what uh, uh, Mr. Godike will tell you in the seven minutes of transportation, you know that sometimes uh, when man is not uh, in touch with the machine, certainly the man would likely utter what should B. My name is E. Karawata, and it's time uh, for us to talk aviation this morning. As usual, we have our own aviation freak, uh, Mr. Agodi Ike, with us, and we are talking about aviation safety. You're welcome, sir. Good morning, Nata. A very good morning. Yeah, how was the weekend? Wonderful, well, as always. <laughs> wonderful. And uh, my great viewers, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you very much. Today we are going to aviation safety. We have been there before, but today we are going to uh, part two, if I'm right now. Yeah. Part two, and we yeah. must tell you that it just goes beyond what uh, what people like us, who are not aviation freak here, but somewhat elementary air travelers. What we know for sure is to put your luggage in and ask those guys, is my luggage inside? And once that is done, you you enter in, uh, if possible, you put your earpiece. Uh, okay, for takeoff and for landing, you take them off. When you are cruising, you put them in. Some guys come serve you tea and coffee, and you are good to go. When you land, you come down, you call friends and family, and that's all what we know. But somehow, beyond that, so much is happening around you that you don't even know of. And that's what we are talking this morning, and we are all we are bringing that. I'm also trying to learn here very fast, and I hope when I'm through with all of them before Joseph Kadir return. I will also be somewhat a mini aviation freak. Yeah, <laughs> Even like yeah that's what why. What do we have for today? Wonderful. Um, we are continuing with our aviation safety okay. um, uh, topic. Okay. Um, like I said, the first time um, it's, it's such a huge, huge topic, okay. and it's everything that uh, you you want to know. In, in, you know, in aviation. As a matter of fact, aviation is synonymous with safety. Everything that comes against safety gives way for safety so uh, it's always number one safety 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 and uh, like you you pointed out a moment ago i often say to people airplanes are very fitful machines they are fitful they are well built and loaded with a, a lot of redundance if this goes bad you switch to the other and, and you keep going unfortunately human operators are very dishonest and can be very unfaithful and that's why planes fall off the skies and so um let's uh, get get on with the first clip okay and I'm then uh, to part two now let's get the yeah, first clip yes um uh if we get the first clip we'll run through some of the subtopics we're going to be dealing with you know in that uh, so that's it there um <clears throat> the following hazards are usually associated with uh, flight operations so number one foreign object debris uh misleading information and lack of uh, information lightning ice and snow engine failure structural failure of the aircraft stalling um you know fire bed strike i mean we we dealt with by strike uh, very exhaustively you know a few weeks back um number 10 human factors pilot uh, fatigue when pilots get too tired they should be allowed to rest uh piloting while intoxicated uh, a couple of irresponsible ones drink a lot in the cockpit and uh, get intoxicated and that's quite dangerous uh, for safety um controlled flight into terrain um, electromagnetic interference, uh, ground uh, uh, damage, volcanic ash, um, uh, 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 and if you if you move to clip two quickly, you know, run through the all, all these uh, uh, subtopics, and then then uh, number seventeen is uh, runway safety incidents, terrorism, uh, deliberate air crew action military action uh, it, it's not it's not all but I, I i want us to hover around um these 20 subtopics because most most of them can happen in our own climate 
uh, the others that are specific to other parts of the world because of the special nature of their weather and uh, and uh, terrain. You know, so um, uh, I had to eliminate those because um, specifically, although we are talking to the world, but this is one, special, one specially from Nigeria. I'm proudly from Nigeria. <laughs> yes. So um, if we if we move to um, clip three. But I, I, well, I, I, yeah, go ahead. If I, you have any I, I was going to clip two here because I know for sure there was a time yeah. I had traveled uh, for a function in mm. Cape Town mm. and the then President Gulag Jonathan had also attended. And while he was to travel back, we all went with him uh, from uh, the hotel uh, down to the airport in Cape Town. Mm. And we were shocked that we saw some disorganization in the airport. Uh, you know, he only see most time they fly with two planes yes. there, and himself with one and few people while the other backup plane, or like the advanced, the advanced plane also. But he, he couldn't fly, and we had people whispering to people. And all of a sudden, he had to come down, enter the second plane, and flee to Nigeria. Uh, uh, we, we, I remember that that was the same day the Ombatse uh, court group attacked some officials that were killed in Nasarawa State. Yeah? And I was shocked when I asked him, they said, No, they said, a bird died in the engine. And, and I, was, I was asking, what does that really mean? That was best Come part. with your crush and we we'll get no, going. No. The, the and impact, the next, that if you had watched... Year, we all return and they said they have to do some... If you had watched when we did the series on, on Best Strike, okay. we, did, we did about three or four parts exhaustively, you would have, not, you, you would have noticed that no matter how small a bed, uh, the bed, bed in question is, okay. the impact is huge because of the, the the forces that come to play when an airplane is steering away at about 500 knots which is almost 900 or 950 you know, kilometers an hour okay. that's awesome okay and you you have a bed flying from opposite you know direction and uh, and then get sucked in first of all those blades you know around the, uh, uh, the jet engines will get displaced and uh, and shatter and and, uh, and and if you're unfortunate uh, it, it cuts one of those uh, you know pipes that uh, supply you know jet fuel that will be fire and it's quite dangerous it, it shouldn't even you shouldn't even dare you know fly beyond uh, another mile uh, but the, the, the plane did not if, take off at all. They just that, that that plane is not safe for flying. It, that could have happened quite while they were landing. That's is, you know that, that's the only way they they could have discovered it. Uh, well, that, uh, a, 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 a plane, a machine like that, a uh, very strategic one, Nigerian Air Force One, for instance, yeah. uh, could be more sophisticated. It doesn't matter how sophisticated any airplane is. It's all about pilots being trained. But, to but, but, but now, to, before we go to this one, how do they spot the bed? There? Because I know for sure. I really just started people. No, uh, there is a pre flight inspection that every pilot must do before, if you, if you get to an airplane first thing in the morning in a state that is known as um, cold and dark. Okay. Right. Uh, you, you, uh, a, a good pilot and a professional one that knows his onions must go round the, the entire aircraft, taking taking a look at you know, some very critical points, especially the, the engine port. He's got to go to the engine port. As a matter of fact, um, there's a, there's a photograph to that effect on the previous on on on, on the previous uh, I mean during our part one. Uh, I posted a photograph like that that wasn't used, but um, maybe if those in the you know uh, behind the scene here getting all the clips can just quickly open up um, uh, the the previous uh, I mean part one, okay. they, they will see a photograph with an aircraft and a, and, and a pilot you know taking a look very close look to in in a, in an engine port. That is the pre-flight inspection that you are expected to carry out. You know. Look at your tires. Look at uh, all those your um, you know elevators, your air runs, and you, you want to be sure that everything, physically speaking, what the eyes can see. So, in the process of such uh, taking a look at the engine port, if if you have sucked in any any debris, be it a bed or any material, volcanic ash, whatever, you will see it. And as soon as you see it, number one thing, remember.
all the time is safety. You must terminate that flight. You must have. So you mean, must abort that flight. Had not gone with the backup, he would have taken a look at. Oh well, that's what that's what it would have boiled down to, because you can't even take the chance. You must abort that flight, and that was exactly what happened to Mr. President at the time, uh, when they noticed that that plane sucked in uh, uh, bed, they grounded it. To, to deal with it and then of course he came home with, with, with the others I mean with the other plane and of course his uh, the people who should have flown with the second plane well, yes they will have to go back to their hotel room and then uh, give uh, a few hours or one or two days as the case may be for for that okay, program to be fixed. Let's come to safety clip three quickly. Uh, clip, clip, three. clip three please. Okay, clip three that would be nice for us so that we quickly uh, start to run somehow. Okay, that's the three. Yeah, that that clip three will really excite you. Okay. That is a live photo okay. of the uh, the Concorde jet that crashed. If you if you remember, okay. uh, you know um, uh, that was in France uh, when um, uh, I, I think, as a matter of fact, this particular incident ended use use of uh, uh, Concorde. Uh, airplanes. That was how it was grounded. Uh, as you read through, you see how this this is live picture of the particular plane. Taking off. Yes, taking off. He picked up a debris, roughshod you know one of his tanks, and leaking fuel got ignited by the engine exhaust. The pilot was informed by the control tower when this was going on. Okay. Unfortunately, he had attained V1 speed. Now, it, it, when you're taking off, uh, there's, there, there are about three counts that your first officer will do for you as, as you put your full power for, for, for your takeoff run. The first is 80 knots. And then the second, as you are, as you are tearing away to about uh, two thirds of, um, of uh, uh, the, the runway, you achieve your V1. At V1, even if you discover a problem, you can't stop. You must take into the air, take to the air at V1. Now, if you were when you when you had your 80 knots and you discover something was wrong, you can abort the flight and put your back thrust and slam on your mechanical brakes. And the likelihood is that you'll be able to stop the aircraft before the end of the runway, so you don't crash into objects. But if you tear away and then you hit the speed of V1. And they say, oh, that's a problem, just like this one happened. At the point, the pilot was informed by the control tower that fire was trailing him. He had attained V1, and there was no he way he was going to start. Had to hit the, he, the, the only chance you have is get into the air and see if you have enough time to turn around and land, or if there is in, 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 uh, an airport that is close by that you can divert to and of course call the control tower there to give you clearance uh, for emergency landing and you try oh, to oh, land. Oh, 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 this fire. In, in, this fire. in this case, it was too late. The, the pilot uh, was running from Charles de Gaulle and then there's a nearby airport, the, the uh, uh, Le Bouguet, um, uh, you know, airport that he he, he thought he would just you know go and land, but it was too late. He lost everything, lost engine power, and then of course, uh, yes, into um, uh, a small hotel somewhere, killing about uh, you know two or three other people on the ground and slaughtering all the hundred people in the in, in it. That that marked the end of the use of Concorde airplane. That's how Concorde was grounded and up until today, none of them takes to the air. So let's read through what uh, foreign uh, object debris uh, um, can, can cause okay. in, in clip three. Foreign debris, FOD, constitute items left in the aircraft structure during manufacture and repairs. Uh, debris left on the wrong way, uh, just as in this case that you're looking at right now. Uh, and solids in flight, such as hail and dust, constitute hazards, as they can damage engines and other parts of the aircraft. Air France Flight 4590, that is 4590, crashed after hitting um, a pad that fell from another aircraft. That was on the wrong way. The, uh, the, uh, the first aircraft that uh, you know, no, landed. Not landed before his takeoff run, yeah. left the debris on the wrong way, and then one of the tires picked it up and hauled it up to the uh, wing where you have the fuel tanks and ruptured one of the tanks. That's what happened to, to this aircraft. This is a live picture of exactly the same plane 
had hundred people in there that's, that got slaughtered when it crashed. Right. Now, um, uh, Air France Flight 4590 crashed after hitting a pad that fell from another aircraft. That accident took place 25th July 2000 in uh, Gonaise, France. 130 passengers, crew, and ground victims lost their lives in that crash. And the, the, uh, they were made of 100, 100 passengers, nine crew, and four on, on, on ground. You know, because it fell into a, a hotel and uh, you know, killed up four people in, you know, in, in, in that compound when, uh, when it crashed. Unfortunate. That is one of those things that we find in, uh, in you know, uh, and what we're dealing with. And uh, our our own ways should always be swept clean all the time, all the time. When planes land and and get off the wrong way, about one, two, three, or four landings, diligence requires that quickly. A sweeper must run through the wrong way, clear off all the debris, and get ready to receive other airplanes and take other ones off. That's, 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 that's diligence. Um, we need it in aviation. Okay, but are, yeah, are, are we doing yeah. I've not observed that so much in our airport. Yeah, we don't even have it. I don't even they, there's so much, observe that so much in our atta, airport. Here. Atta, that's, that means we're living by grace. By grace. There's so much to be done. And my head is running crazy about having my likes, the only one in the world, living in this, in this country and watching helplessly that uh, this is what we have in our aviation sector. We can't go on this way. God will help us someday to, to, to get to our senses and do what we have to do. Money is not the issue. Attitude is the issue. Now, let's get to clip four. Clip four, please. Okay, clip four. We have clip four there. Uh, okay. Yeah, misleading information, or lack of information. Uh, and uh, lack of information. That's one of the hazards we have in, in, in aviation. A pilot misinformed by a printed document such as manual or map or reacting to a faulty instrument or indicator in the cockpit or on the ground or following inaccurate instructions from flight or ground control can lose spatial orientation. I'm going to explain that to you. Okay. Lose spatial orientation or make another mistake and consequently lead to accidents or near misses. Now, um, uh, Atta, if they come back to us, I'll uh, explain something to you. Right. Whenever you have a challenge in the cockpit as a well-trained professional pilot, your business and that of your first officer is to keep the plane flying as others help you sort, sort the matter. Very often, pilots get emotional and get agitated, you know, get agitated and, is altered. and leave the business of flying the aircraft and begin to help to check what the matter is. That's why you have a flight engineer in the in the cockpit. That's why you have you know all, other assistants who are who, you know who are in the aircraft you know as crew. Business of the of the pilot, even if the first officer will help to check what those technical issues are and uh, and try to sort them out, the main man that is in control for that particular tree must keep his attention. It continue to fly. Make sure you're not heading to the terrain. Make sure you're not losing your bearing and, and going and going off course. Keep the plane flying while others solve solve the problem. Now, uh, the, the, the issue also of um, uh, uh, spatial uh, orientation, uh, uh, very often, when, when pilots have no relativity, nothing, especially in the night, nothing to really look at, to, and you're just holed up in, in that, um, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, cockpit, you, you, you will notice that uh, the uh, you know your orientation becomes uh, faulty even when the plane is upside down you don't even know it it has to do with some organs in your ears yeah, yeah. Uh, you you just lose your orientation the plane may even be heading to the terrain and you you will think it's flying straight straight and that is very dangerous. That's what is referred to here as uh, you know, spa, uh, sp losing your spatial orientation. Okay. And so that, the problem is known as spatial disorientation. All right? 
So the, you know, I, I thought I should explain that to you. If let's run quickly to um, uh, clip five, and uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, cl clip five. Lightning is one of the issues that we have. Although aircraft can withstand typical, uh, you know, lightning strikes without damage, studies show that airlines are struck by lightning twice a year, on average. Until the destruction of a glider in 1999, the dangers of more powerful positive lightning were not understood. A lightning discharge is an electric discharge between the atmosphere and a, uh, an, an earthbound object. They usually originate in a uh, uh, cumulonimbus cloud. cloud. Uh, you, you know, you know, you know that cloud. Very, very dark yeah. cloud that, that, that sometimes that. brings lightning that splits the air, and when the air comes back, it, it creates that uh, electricity. And it, it, it comes in the form of a vertical, a vertical cloud yeah. with a base like, looking like, looking an like umbrella, a car. Like umbrella. Yes, sometimes it can lead to it can lead to hurricane. That's correct. That's correct. I'm glad you know this. And so, uh, terminate on the ground, cloud to cloud. You have the um, lightning that is, is known as cloud to ground, the CG, and light, uh, you know, and other categories include uh, ground to cloud, which is a CG, cloud to cloud, uh, or the CC, you know, uh, you know, lightnings. And the, the photograph there is showing you a sign of how this is. But, 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 but the mother height is lightning. Yeah. Oftentimes, are not the best for a pilot to go in. They are not good well, at all. If you can avoid it, it's, it's avoid. nice to avoid. But, but, but please, how please, do you avoid it? Uh, well, is that you go above the cloud? No, no, no. Um, if, if the weatherman is informing you that he's going to have thunderstorm on your, on your flight path, then delay the flight. Because usually, you know, weather is very treacherous. It, it doesn't tell you when it goes bad and when it goes, you know, it's, it's always changing. You know, that sort of a thing. Stick to the air. You know? So um, let's look at, uh, is it clip five or six? Clip six. Clip six. Clip six. Okay, yeah. So um, uh, we are now going to be looking at some in-flight lightning incidents that took place around the world. Uh, if you, uh, um, the first one is uh, the, uh, that happened in um, uh, December 8, 1963. A 81 passengers and crew died in a Pan Am flight. As a matter of fact, is the same plane you are looking at on the left photograph. Um, you know, uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, the pan flight that, um, that's a satellite photograph of that uh, airplane because it was actually, they had a thunderstorm and it was asked to be on a, uh, on a holding pattern, you know, going 360 degrees in order to wait for, uh, for, for the stormy weather to calm down before they could proceed to Philadelphia where they were, you know, you know flying to. But what happened? Suddenly, out of the blues. Uh, uh, there was a strike of lightning. Okay. It ignited one of the tanks. Unfortunately, that, that, that photograph on the right is not um, you know, clear here, but as soon as we deal with these clips, I will call for the main photograph. Okay, but, 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 but it's clear right here. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, okay. It's clear here. Uh, well, yeah, you know, for my viewers to read. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, the, the Pan Am Flight 214, which crashed outside Acton, Maryland, USA during a severe electrical storm. So that, that's it there. Um, uh, can you get me the, that schematic diagram, you okay. know, the, re, the full the uh, diagram. Yes, uh, sch schematic diagram yeah. of that airplane? No, no, no the, the schematic, the, 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 second, the second one. Okay, this is the where you have um, drawings. They draw, the yes, drawings. Yeah. The, the hand drawn one, that's, that's what is known as schematic. Okay. If we can look, take a look at that. Yeah. That would be, be nice. Uh, yeah, but if if you're, if you're not finding it, then uh, let's move to uh, clip seven. clip seven. Um, let's move to clip seven, so that uh, uh, we'll run through some of the incidents that, uh, you know, okay. and you see that it's not it's easy. Seven. Yes, uh, uh, we are continuing with some in-flight lightning incidents. Okay. Uh, November fourteenth, nineteen sixty-nine. Apollo the Apollo 12 mission Saturn V um, rocket and its ionized exhaust plume became part of a lightning flash channel. You know, because it's, it's built to resist, you know, lightning, uh, you know, uh, damage from, from lightning. What, what, did, what did it turn itself into? The thing attached itself 
and it became a ball of fire on its own. But it didn't cause any damage, by the way. And, and that happened for um, uh, about um, uh, 36.5 you know, seconds after lift off. And those are the three, you know, lovely gentlemen who were, who were in that, uh, you know, uh, 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 spacecraft. Yes, you know those those gentlemen were, were were the ones in there when 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 they were hit by lightning. But of course, uh, the the machine was it's built so enough. well and resistant to lightning, so it, it did no damage and it cost no life. Uh, uh, let's move to clip A, please. Uh, we are going to be continuing with uh, uh, some in-flight lightning incidents. Uh, if we get clip A, it will be it will be wonderful. So our viewers will quickly see some of the incidents that have taken place. Here we go, Atta. Uh, okay. The uh, C, uh, December 24th, 1971. Nine, 91 people lost their lives when Linnaeus Arias Nisiones uh, Suicidad Anonima, uh, known as Lanza, uh, you know, known as Lanza uh, flight, operated as Lanza Flight 508 crashed after a lightning strike. The Lockheed L-188A Electra turboprop plane registered as OBR-941, which operated a scheduled domestic passenger flight, was struck by a lightning which ignited a fuel tank while it was en route from Lima, Peru to uh, Pucallpa, Peru. All of its six crew members and 85 of its 86 passengers died. Only one woman survived in that, you know, in that crash, and it was it was miraculous. Uh, the lone survivor, uh, Julian Kupke, fell off, stay strapped to her seat, two miles, that's 3.2 kilometers, down into the uh, Amazon rainforest. I mean, rainforest. She miraculously survived the fall and was able to walk through the jungle for 10 days. <laughs> 10 days. Because the anacondas. <laughs> oh, I don't know about the anacondas. Uh, uh, yes. I know that. Uh, until, I yes, all those anacondas. animals. Yes, I know. And that she walked for 10 days until she was rescued by local lumber men. Men who went in there to, to pull down trees and all those stuff. And, you know, found her and then rescued her. 10 days. That's what that, that was. That was a piece of miracle. But, but the water is was, no, was, the, the wasn't that miraculous? Was, the, forest, the falling was miraculous, but the forest, uh, the forest is rich. You actually have enough of stream. The only fear there is you have some real, uh, real, uh, some, some, some sort of jackals, some That's sort right. of uh, 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 conscriptors here, yeah, the boas there. That's right. All That's these right. conscriptors, mm -hmm. and you have some wild mm -hmm. animals there, even wild mm -hmm. sharks, some of the yeah. rivers around the, the, the Amazon forest. But yet, mm -hmm. we thank God she survived. That's right. Wow. The only one, you know, in that flight. All right, um, let's uh, get to the next clip. I think we're dealing with cl uh, clip nine now, nine. isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that um, uh, uh, we we continue with the uh, uh, time is usually not our no friend fine. here. <laughs> it has never been even in government. <laughs> okay. Well. All right, that's fine. Uh, that's clip nine. nine. Uh, D. Um, November. We are continuing with, of course, uh, uh, some lighting incidents. Um, November 4, 2012, a plane was reported to have exploded off the coast of Hembay, Kent, in England, while flying. The story turned out to be false, as the plane was actually part of the flash channel, you know, which observers reported. You know, I mean, when they, when they saw that plane that they are taking on the, the, the flash and moving with it, they, you know, the people say, oh, that plane exploded, but well, eventually it was found. Uh, but that, I, I just showed you the, um, uh, the um, uh, hand bay, uh, that's, that's, that's the beach uh, on the left, the photo on the left, and of course the clock tower. Of, uh, of the beautiful city of, uh, of Hembe is, 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 is on our right. right. You know, just, just to please the eyes of our viewers and then see how cities, cities can be made. You know, these are all handmade. We can do the same for we can, ourselves. We can do more than this. We can do more than, we this. Do more than this. We just have to get serious as a people. That's all it takes, getting serious. That's all. And then, um, having done uh, uh, you know, clip nine, um, we, 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 yes, uh, we, we need to take your usual wonderment questions and uh, uh, <laughs> oh, from, from what you've heard so far. 
let's let's go into general discussion. No, no, but, 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 but quickly, our time our time is up. I think what we will do now, yeah. wait when we when we are through with all the clips. Is, is yeah. there anything nice? No, no, no. Well, it's, when we are through with all the clips by next week, then we can then actually interface. Our viewers who are out there, you have really followed through. Most of these things are things that you don't really see around. Sometimes the pilots don't tell you not to create panic. Sometimes they do tell you. Sometimes we'll have a little turbulence. Uh, please just leave your seatbelt fasting. Don't worry. Uh, the weather in Abuja is good, but between uh, for between Lagos is good, but before <laughs> landing we have some turbulence on the air. And when you start to see these things, some of you start to recite the Quran. This Jesus, Jesus type of thing start to come. But somehow we are all going to get through it, and we always pray for safety. And I want Mr. Godike will tell you the airplane is a faithful, faithful machine. If not for human errors, we are not going to have just any crash if we follow the airplane, carry out all the checks, and but we will we'll be following through uh, that. And you can see the elementary man is not talking. <laughs> Close to the master. Close to the master. And like this. So by, when we come by next week, yeah. we'll interact more. Yeah. We'll take some, some, some uh -huh. analysis there, and we'll see if we can add some more details. Uh, right. Thank God, those who are out there, uh, you've got one elementary air traveler here on the set. I'll ask him all the questions you want to ask him. And for that, we'll keep uh, connecting. Uh, well, after that, we'll... Uh, next week, we're going to be continuing with um, uh, 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 part three. Uh, I, like I said, on the first day, it's such a huge, huge topic. We may, we may go up until about part five to exhaust it. It's huge. And, and the, 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 the more we... Uh, I'm taking the easier ones and leaving the more difficult ones for, 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 for the later stage. Would, uh, uh, by next week, we're going to be looking at... Uh, uh, you know, uh, likes of stall, and, and uh, you know, as one of the hazards, and show you live picture of a stall that was caught on camera. You know, of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of an American uh, 747, um, you know, uh, planes in in Afghanistan, and you see exactly how when you talk about stall, people just wonder. Oh, why would an airplane that is steering away at high speed suddenly not, fall off the sky? Not tear through. Why would it not tear through? That's correct. That's the question but it's, it's amazing. When you get into a stall, uh, utter, your engines will be blasting away and the plane just stops flying. For instance, you got, you got your airplane tearing away at about 500 or 550 knots. And then something happens and take you, take you up there on a high pitch of an angle of attack, what we call angle of attack. And then you begin to lose airspeed. And for, and for some strange reason, the pilot is unable to Stabilize bring the back the pitch in order to gain airspeed. As soon as the minimum speed designed for this aircraft to stay in the skies is attained, and then you fall below it, below that minimum speed, this airplane, the engines will be blasting away the plane just stops flying. You know what it does? Vertically, it comes down. And as soon as it starts coming down vertically, uh, Atta, no matter how much you put power in your engine, this fall continues until it hits the terrain. It's, it's an amazing phenomenon. So for the Nigerian man here, he will tell you that it's not, it's not my portion. <laughs> You've heard that before. <laughs> that it's, not, it's not my portion, yeah. So what it's, it's, portion. It's, it's an amazing phenomenon. Once a vertical push on a stall begins to happen, you are doomed. Can we stabilize it and uh, hit back? If you are up in the sky about 30, 35,000 feet above sea level and you run into a stall, maybe some ice uh, kept your elevator in a negative position and then put you up on, on a high pitch and you, you know, rapidly lost your airspeed. And, uh, and then if you are able to push on, uh, on your joystick and able to quickly, you know, uh, put in your de-icing heating to, to release those things. If you take a dive and gain some speed and then pull up, you may be able to fly away from the stall. But if a stall happens to you at an altitude that is too low to help you, and then you begin to drop vertically, at all. Then you say into your hand, is, into your hand I commit my spirit. There is no end to the fall. I say into your hand I commit my spirit. That's correct. Okay, well, that's that's correct. we can go uh, for today. Thanks uh, right. for coming. Mm. Uh, on Monday next week, uh, 8 a.m., Mr. Godi Ike will be back here on set. We'll be talking more. That's the detail of Mr. Godi Ike on the screen here. You could see his phone number, telephone number to contact him talk sometimes you may just need to actually get some information here that you need you can call
call him on his telephone number, his email address, godiike at yahoo.com, his website, uh, uh, www.aviationfreak.com, uh, YouTube channel, Aviation Freak. Uh, Freaks. Aviation Freaks, sorry, the X is what I'm not pronouncing there, <laughs> official. Uh, and tweet, you say, okay, at Aviation Freaks, uh, all of those, uh, please follow through. That, uh, but Monday next week, uh, 8 a.m., he'll be back on set here, and we'll be navigating through aviation safety. One very long topic, as he described it, that will actually keep you informed that when you're on air and you know what happens around you, you may feel more safer and you may feel more, more relaxed than just to block your ear with those uh, earpieces and wait for arrival. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take a break very quickly. <laughs> when will we after the break? The program this morning on ITV would continue. And next is a brief history of the International Criminal uh, Justice Day as the world marks uh, International Criminal Justice Day today. You know the world is not joking with that at all. We have our president, ex-president, uh, Laura Gbagbo, uh, still facing trial in the egg. Uh, uh, President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya was lucky that his own appeared to be quashed, but some are saying someday, sometime in future, he may be called back. The President of Sudan is still hiding in Katu, not willing to travel to even neighboring Juba for all he cares since the arrest warrant was issued by the ICC that he must come face trial for crime committed against humanity at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. He have uh, been struggling all, all through. Even in South Africa, he managed to escape in Nigeria. Yeah, I was at the transcom heating. He also managed to escape. The world is looking to arrest him. Let's watch that clip. 